When it pours like this, you probably don't give much thought as to where the water goes, unless it goes into your neighborhood and creates flooding. Where Staten Island's rainwater travels and how it is managed is a unique and very interesting story. You wouldn't know it to look at it, but this beautiful spot is a highly engineered drainage system, as is this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one too. These scenic locations are all part of the Staten Island Blue Belt. The Blue Belt program is such a success that Mayor Bloomberg, Borough President Molinaro, and Councilman Otto are expanding the system to the mid-island areas of Midland Beach, South Beach, and Oakwood Beach, which are notoriously plagued with flooding during heavy rains. Staten Island is not like the other boroughs within the city. It's a place where there are trees and there are natural areas and we have ponds and wetlands that are worthy of preservation. So rather than creating a conventional storm sewer system that would have resulted in the destruction of so many of these natural areas, the Blue Belt is an effort to preserve these natural areas and incorporate them into the, the drainage system. Water drainage is the primary function of the Blue Belt. When we get heavy rains, the water must be allowed to drain off the streets so that flooding and flood damage does not occur to streets, neighboring properties, homes, and businesses. Most streets on Staten Island have conventional storm sewer drains, as do the streets in the other boroughs. But once the heavy rainwater flows into these drains, that is where our system of water drainage is very special. Instead of the water flowing through an expensive system of underground pipes, it is channeled into an ingeniously engineered natural drainage system known as a BMP, short for Best Management Practice. And here we are at one of the BMPs, and this particular one is a constructed wetland, a specially uh, built uh, man-made wetland area. And what this does is it reduces the impacts of that urban stormwater coming off of the streets in the developed areas. So at this location, we slow down the velocity of the stormwater so it's not as erosive and not as destructive. We have special uh, uh, facilities here that allow for contaminants and sediments to settle out where we can collect them. The contaminants and sediments are collected by a giant vacuum cleaner on wheels known as a vector truck. They clean up all that nasty uh, material that collects in, in our facilities, in the places where we want it to collect. So the vectoring is a very important kind of housekeeping uh, function to keep these systems working properly and to enhance the water quality as much as we possibly can. Another way that the water quality is enhanced is through the use of plants. Uh, let's take a walk down to the water's edge and discuss the, how the wetland plants improve water quality. And a wetland plant is essentially a plant that grows in standing water. Uh, after a rain event, what happens is the water collects in the new stormwater system and flows out into one of our blue belt wetlands. And at that point, we take the opportunity to use natural plants to remove some of the pollutants that we commonly find in stormwater. And so, in, for instance, in this case, we've planted pickerel weed, this flower along the water's edge, this plant uh, with the purple flowers. And as the contaminated water comes into the site, these plants actually take up a great deal of things such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Mm -hmm. So that when the water leaves this site to continue on to natural water bodies such as streams, and in this case, it'll flow through Blue Heron Park, the water is much cleaner. The structure I'm standing on is called a weir wall, and this is a structure we commonly use in the Blue Belt to create our ponds or wetlands. And it essentially does two things. It holds back the water, setting the water elevation, creating the pond, and releases the water slowly, as you see in the center of the weir wall here, uh, in a manner that during a rainfall, the water doesn't flow out at a fast rate and do damage downstream. Most of the BMP drainage areas have weir walls, as well as boundary walls, which are faced in stone and have become known on Staten Island for their beautiful design. The design methodology that we use in the Staten Island Blue Belt is 1800s rural Staten Island. We're standing along Sweetbrook right now, and the head wall you see behind me 
was designed using a photograph of a bridge that was built in 1845. We use uh, only locally uh, local stones, and the community is uh, very happy about the look of the stone wall. And uh, it's a great complement to you know the elements that we incorporate into the Bluebell project. The Bluebell projects are helped to remain beautiful by the involvement of community groups in the highly successful Adopt a Bluebell program. In the past three years, Borough President James Molinaro has completed a downzoning and zoning reform initiative that will prevent further dense overdevelopment in areas like these. And his efforts in partnership with Councilman James Otto have saved a valuable natural resource. They provided $1.5 million in funding for the purchase of Last Chance Pond, preserving this crucial link in the new Mid-Island Blue Belt. Last Chance Pond has now been added to the 350 acres of Blue Belt land on Staten Island. That number will soon be expanding in three major phases. Phase one is Midland Beach. South Beach will be phase two. And Oakwood Beach, phase three. Thanks to the New York State DEC, a one and a half year moratorium on permits for construction near these wetlands has given the New York City DEP valuable time to begin the process of designating specific areas for future acquisition. These low-lying areas have chronic flooding and icing problems that will be alleviated by these three future Blue Belt drainage systems. The Midland Beach Blue Belt project, also known as New Creek, has already begun. This is a project that will enhance the quality of life on Staten Island. It will prevent street flooding from, uh, with far less construction-related hassle than building storm sewers. And in the bargain, it will also create the kind of diverse open spaces that Staten Islanders have come to enjoy. This cost for this, the cost for this project will be borne in part with discretionary capital dollars from the budgets of the Borough President Molinaro and Councilman Otto. Blue belts are not only less intrusive than storm sewer projects, they're also considerably less expensive. The New Creek System's projected price tag of $37.5 million is about $39 million less than the cost of building storm sewers to serve the same 2,000 acre area. Staten Island's existing Blue Belt corridors have already saved the city more than $80 million in sewer construction costs. I have had the occasion to visit this site about two and a half months ago during a rainstorm with Councilman Otto. And whether you want to believe it or not, there was actually in the street ducks swimming by. And that's the condition that these people have lived under for so many, so many years. We spoke to the city, we showed them it was cost effective. And without the help and cooperation of this mayor, Mayor Mike Bloomberg, this project wouldn't be started today. So I want to thank the mayor in particular for seeing the necessity of producing this. And we're very thankful to Borough President Molinaro and Councilman Otto for supporting us, and not only with their words, but also with their money. So they've understood that this, this is a, a chance to um, really provide an amenity for these communities and, um, and at the same time to provide this essential drainage function. And providing that drainage using a carefully engineered wetland system also gives one more huge benefit and that is in preserving and providing wildlife habitats. A variety of species make the Staten Island Blue Belt their home. In the case of Richmond Creek, which is part of historic Richmond Town, a fish-friendly design has been incorporated into the drainage system. This fish bridge allows fish and eels and other aquatic life to squirm their way upstream or downstream. But I think what makes the Blue Belt unique, what makes it special, is that it, there's a tremendous amount of engineering that went into it, but you don't see that engineering. When you look at it, you think this is a beautiful natural area that, uh, that uh, uh, the hand of man really didn't touch. There are many hands, thankfully, that do touch our Blue Belt properties. The DEP's Staten Island Blue Belt staff have a policy of being good neighbors in the community. They maintain and monitor the Blue Belt so that it is safe, beautiful to behold, a home for wildlife, and continues to operate as an effective drainage system. The Blue Belt, a rare and priceless jewel for Staten Island.